Thank you for the introduction. Um, and I'd also like to thank um, the organisers for giving me the opportunity to talk today. Um, so, um, yeah. um, so today, um, I'd be talking about some work I've been doing in collaboration with Francisco Correa and also my supervisor, Andrea Spring. The talk will be based upon these two papers. The outline of my talk will be, um, I first start off with some motivation, and then I will introduce some new integrable non-local Hirota equations that we found from PD symmetric reduction. From, and that, that we found from um, PD symmetric reductions. And um, as an example, um, I will show you um, how we can construct solutions to um, the parity transform conjugate pair, which is one of the six um, types of new integrable non-local Hirota equations that we found. And um, I'll show you how to do this through using the Hirota method and how we also find a new kind of solution. And the second part of my talk, I will introduce how we can construct degenerate multi-soliton solutions with a local Hiroko equation using um, Darbert's chrome transformations and also discuss some of the solution properties. And then I'll end some, with some conclusions. So, why should we study the Hirota equation? So the, this is the Hirota equation and um, what's highlighted in blue you might notice um, is the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And what the Hirota equation is, is it's a PT symmetric, um, higher order PT symmetric extension of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation that preserves integrability. And so um, the nonlinear Schrodinger equation um, usually is a very famous equation in nonlinear optics that describes. Um, wave pulses in the picosecond regime very well. But what happens if we want to look at wave pulses in the femtosecond regime, um, which is much shorter wave pulses? Um, for this, the nonlinear Schrodinger model is um, not as accurate, and we need some higher order terms. And the Hirota equation um, is one of the um, um, extensions of nonlinear Schrodinger equation that gives us a more accurate model for shorter wave pulses. Why should we be interested in non-locality? Because it's a very fascinating concept. You have a solution field that depends on two positions in space. And that, you might, um, that might remind you of the Alice and Bob story. So it um, depends on two positions in space and two points in time. Why should we be interested in studying degeneracy? Um, because it's mathematically interesting and overlooked. And also, um, the limiting for degeneracy is non-trivial. And um, it also is in nature. You can find them in nature. So this is um, a picture, I don't know if you can see very well, um, but it's the picture taken from the Amazon showing you the famous tidal ball phenomenon. And um, what you see is a degenerate 10 soliton solution. And what that is, is you have peaks, 10 peaks, all of the same amplitude, energy, and speed, traveling simultaneously for hundreds of meters without changing shape or speed. And um, what is non-degeneracy, you may ask? Non-degeneracy is when you have a multisoliton with peaks of different speed, amplitude, and energy. So, I first show you that our Hirota equation can actually be rewritten as a zero curvature condition, where um, our u and v matrices are um, those form with the choices of A, B, C, K, 
here, we obtain a coupled pair of equations. And for particular choices of this R function here, you will find these equations become compatible. And what I mean when I say they become compatible is that um, we can find a transformation that helps us transform the first equation to the second equation. Um, and um, in a way, that means that we only have one system to solve. And um, for the choice of R being Q conjugate, you have the local Hirota equation. And we found six new non-local cases that are integrable. And so um, that means if we have um, the R's to be taken to be these six choice, different choices, our two equations from the zero curvature become compatible. And um, the naming of our six cases um, goes like this. So the parity transform conjugate pair, um, what you do is you need to take the um, first equation, take the non locality in the X, and then take the conjugate, and you obtain the second equation. And this um, method is actually um, the same method that Al Bluids and uh, Muslimani used um, in this paper, um, but they looked at the nonlinear Schrodinger equation and they didn't look at a higher order extension of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And um, we have looked at um, one case, the Hirota um, equation, um, uh, which is a higher order extension of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And um, what we found was that um, using Hirota's method to construct solutions, we found a new type of solution um, which they didn't find um, using the inverse scattering method. So, um, sorry, what's your question again? You mean um, when I have the Q to the minus XT and also Q to XT? Yes, yes it, it's, the, it's, the same, it's the same solution, but you have um, the X as minus X. So, uh, it's, not in, it's not independent. Yeah, so, so that's non-locality. You have um, one solution field that depends on two um, points in um, two positions in space. That's the non-locality. Right. I, I think uh, maybe uh, since this looks like a semantic debate, possibly uh, let her continue and then we'll come back to this if there is still question in the question answer session. Thank you. Um, yes. Um, so going back to um, solutions for the Hirota, um, non-local Hirota equation, I will be um, taking a specific example, um, the parity transform conjugate pair. So that is when the R is chosen to be equal to the minus conjug um, Q conjugate minus XP. And um, this, the first solution, we, we found two solutions. The first solution we call the non-standard solution. And um, this corresponds to the solution that Albulu is and Muslim Mani found in their paper. 
um, when we do some transformation of the variables. And um, here, the solution depends on two real spectral parameters, alpha and beta. And um, when you plot the solution, what well, the solution is, um, it's actually a breathing solution that has singularity at certain points in time. And the second solution that we find, found, um, we call the standard solution. And this is the new type of solution that we found. And as you can see, it's really qualitatively different from the first non-standard solution. And um, you have the solution depending on a complex spectral parameter, alpha. And when you plot the solution, it's periodic in space. So um, now I'll go on to um, describe how we can use Hirota's method to obtain these two different, true, truly different qualitatively um, different solutions. So first of all, um, I will allow um, Q tilde to be representing the non-locality in X. And um, the concept of um, Hirota's method is that first you have a nonlinear equation that you want to solve and through taking a um, transformation of independent variables you can transform this nonlinear equation into a set of bilinear equations to solve. So for our um, non-local Hirota equation if we take this rational um, transformation of independent variables with an auxiliary function h, we obtain the set of bilinear equations to solve. And we can solve them um, by first taking expansions of our g, f, and h function as power series. And you may think that, oh, this looks like perturbation, but it's not perturbation. We can actually find exact solutions if we take g1 to be a finite sum of n terms and solving um, the orders, um, the um, equations of epsilons um, order by order, you can find an exact n soliton solution. And so how do we obtain the two different um, solutions, standard and non-standard? For the standard one, um, what you do is you, uh, uh, you keep epsilon um, arbitrary and you solve the equations um, one by one, order by order. Um, and that would give you the standard solution. For the non-standard solution, what you need to do is um, take epsilon to be equal to one, and then um, what happens is that you can solve a combination of equations, and that would give you um, the new type of solution that we found, the standard solution. Um, the, not, not the new type, the um, original non-standard solution that um, Albert-Lewis and Muslimani also found in their paper. So the second part of my talk, um, I will introduce how we can obtain degeneracy using Darbert's Krim transformations. And um, the concept of Darbert's Krim transformations is that you have a Hamiltonian, and in the Hamiltonian, the potential would be the solution of the um, equation that we want to solve. And um, through Darbeck's chrome iterations, you can obtain a whole tower, an infinite tower of Hamiltonians with um, the same eigenvalue, but different potential. And um, for the nth Darbeck's chrome iteration, you would be able to obtain an exact n soliton solution. So for the Hirota equation, um, first of all, um, from the zero curvature representation of the Hiroko equation, we can transform the zero curvature into this system of linear PDEs. And you can take the first um, a linear system, or first order differential equation, sorry. And um, you can take the first equation and identify this Hamiltonian, and then take in um, Darby's iterations um, you, can, you obtain this Hamiltonian where the QN would be our N soliton solution. And um, so for when N is equal to 2, we can obtain a degenerate 
two solid on solution with um, taking the determinant of these two matrices and actually um, I like to call them um, by Ronskian and um, the reason why is that um, for Ronskian you usually have um, the function and then the first order um, derivative of the function but here um, I like to call it by Ronskian with respect to lambda because you have two functions and then two first order derivatives respect to lambda of the function. And, um, oh yeah. Um, and then we can also actually um, obtain non-degenerate two solitons, non-degenerate multisolitons um, with the Diabetes Chrome transformations. And here I've plotted um, the scattering behavior of a non-degenerate two soliton solution. And so we have um, three types, three different types of scattering behavior. The first one, bounce and exchange. And second one, merge and split. And the third one, absorb and emit. However, for the degenerate true soliton, we only found it has one type of scattering behavior, and that's the um, absorb and emit. So um, now I will describe the asymptotics of a degenerate true soliton solution. And I've plotted for you, um, the, red, the, one, um, the line in red is the envelope of our degenerate true soliton with its being, um, one soliton solution in blue. And that's how it runs. So if you look at it more closely, um, before scattering, the peaks are traveling, sorry, nearly finished. Um, before scattering, you can see that um, the peaks of the um, constituents of the two soliton are traveling oops, closer and closer together. And at time zero, we are at center of scattering. And as soon as we leave um, time zero, the solitons um, start moving apart again. And in the asymptotics, when we turn time to infinity, we find um, the peaks of the two solitons, they will tend the same height as the one soliton. And um, the displacement between them is time dependent. So what about the energy of our degenerate true soliton? So you, we have, um, as I said before, it's a complex soliton. And um, we found the charges for the one soliton solution to be um, real for the even charges and odd for the imaginary. However, the physical quantities are real, and particularly the Hamiltonian for the Hirota equation of the one soliton solution um, is real because of PT symmetry, as um, we've dressed the odd Q3 with um, an I, and hence, um, using integrability, um, we can see the degenerate true soliton as um, sum of single solitons in asymptotics, similarly for the degenerate n soliton. So um, to end with some conclusions, um, today I've shown you how to construct new integrable non-local Hiroto equations from PT symmetry reductions, how to implement non-locality with the Hiroto method, how to implement degeneracy with Darbus Crumb transformations, and that degenerate multisolitons have time-dependent displacements. And um, despite being complex, they have real energies due to PT symmetry and integrability. And some open questions um, for us. It'd be very interesting if we could see these solutions um, experimentally. And um, also to investigate the statistical behavior of a degenerate soliton gas. Thank you for listening. Uh, we have time for questions. Huh. Okay. So I guess uh, Ablovitz Ladik also had the discrete version of this model, which was not a uh, Muslimani and uh, Ablovitz had discrete version of this non-local model, which was also integrable. So uh, if you just discretize your uh, Hirota equation in the same form, will it also remain uh, integrable? Then you'll have a non-local discrete 
integrable model? I guess, I guess yes. I, we oh. haven't tried it. Okay, okay. Uh, and just one, one other question. Uh, so, are there any other extensions of this non-local Schrodinger equation uh, that are also integrable with the same prescription? I mean, the prescription looks fairly straightforward that you have this, you double the amount of fields and you have some symmetry relation and then you test for integrity. So, are there any generalizations of non-linear Schrodinger equation uh, that are also integrable uh, in this? So, uh, Apart from the one you showed. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And you see the first equation here, and that's the Hirota equation, right? And um, as I said, um, yes, that's just one of the few um, extensions of um, higher order extensions of the nonlinear Schrodinger equation that remains integrable. And um, there are also um, a few known um, extensions that are also integrable um, with different choices of the constants in, um, in the front of our higher order terms. And um, yes, there are only a few of them. We can't remember the exact constant. There are four of them, I believe. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Ah, there's one. From Maxwell equation. Sorry? I mean, how can you derive this non local Hirota equation from Maxwell equation? Whether is, it, is this physically interesting or hypothetical model? Is it a. I mean, this model is, I mean, uh, is, is this hypothetical or physically interesting model? This non-local Hirota equation. Yeah, is it, I'm so sorry. Is this hypothetical model or physically interesting model? Interesting model. Yeah, the, can you realize this in an experiment? Or can you get these equations from Maxwell equation, which is the fundamental way yeah. to describe a laser pulse, for example? Yes, um, at the moment, um, we don't know of any any actual um, physical experiments that could actually this is actually this is hypothetical model you cannot derive from Maxwell equations that's why I asked the question uh, any other questions okay if not uh, let's thank Julia again